Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing an in-depth analysis on the CFMoto 800NK. I don't know if this bike will be making it to the United States for this year, but judging by the fact that the motor that goes in it is already in the Ibex 800 and that bike is here, I think it's pretty safe to say this bike will show up at some point for the United States market. Before we get going, if you enjoyed this content, please consider hitting that subscribe button and leaving a like on this video if you found it helpful or informative. This video is not sponsored by Fogey Garage, but I do have an affiliate code for them where you can get 10% off if you use code OMNI. Anyway, let's dive into this comparison and start talking about it. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about, as with any other motorcycle, is the displacement and kind of where it fits into the market. So the CF Moto 800 NK is going to be competing very heavily with the Suzuki GSX-8S, that's a new motorcycle from Suzuki in this last year, and that's already in the United States market. And then there's also the very much anticipated Honda Hornet 750. And that bike has not been confirmed to come to the US market quite yet, but uh, we're, we're hopeful. Displacement along the three machines is 799 for the 800NK, 776 for the Gixxas 8S, and the Hornet coming in with the lowest amount of displacement at 755 cc's. All three of these machines are using a inline twin setup, and if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty positive that they all have a 270 degree firing order. The NK might have the KTM 285 degree firing order, but I don't know. And I don't want to spread misinformation, so if you know for sure, let me know in the comments below. The 800 NK comes swinging out of the gate, with the most horsepower in the class at 94 claimed from CF Moto. The Gixxas 8S is actually at the bottom of the barrel with only 82 horsepower. And the Hornet 750 takes second place with 90 horsepower, which is pretty respectable out of the lowest level displacement machine. I, I feel like usually I find the Hondas are making the least amount of power but being the most efficient engine, so it's nice to see a change of pace on this motorcycle from Honda. Uh, the CF Moto, this should be no surprise, making the most torque in the class because of it having the largest pistons, I assume, coming in at 60 foot-pounds. The Suzuki coming in at second place with 57 and a half foot-pounds, and the Honda ringing it out on the bottom with only 55 foot-pounds. All pretty solid numbers for this kind of middle intermediate welterweight naked motorcycle category. This next figure I found to be pretty shocking. The 800 NK is actually the lightest out of the bunch. So yes, you heard that right. It makes the most power, the most torque, and it's also the lightest. Tipping the scales at just 410 pounds, the Honda rounding out second place at 418 pounds, and the GSX 8S rounding out the bottom of these three at 445 pounds, which is almost, but not quite as heavy as your mama. Ah, ah, he said it, he said it. Seat height, this is an interesting one. The 800NK comes in at 31.3 inches, along with the Honda Hornet 750. So those two tie for this category. And the GSX 8S actually has the tallest seat height at 31.9 inches. Power to weight ratios. This category should not be a surprise because if you can do simple math in your head pretty quickly, you'll figure out that the NK is going to win because it had the most power and the least amount of weight. So this is going to be an obvious win for the CF, but I'll give you the numbers anyway. So for every one pound on the 800 NK, it is producing 0.23 horsepower. And that's number one. And at only 0.01 behind the 800NK, second place goes to the Honda Hornet 750 with 0.22 horsepower per pound. And the Gixxas running at the bottom of the barrel once again. It is the heaviest and it has the lowest horsepower output, so this should be no surprise to anybody. 0.18 horsepower per pound. I do want to take a moment to pause right here. I have only heard praise for the Gixxas 8S so far from the minor reading that I've been doing about it and the little bit of it that I've seen at the dealership I now work at. Uh, I would really like to get some time in the saddle on one to see what it's all about. And even though it is the heaviest, sometimes I feel like that can be a benefit because you really feel planted in the ground with a substantial motorcycle like that. Okay, carrying right along. Front suspension. The CF Moto comes in with a KYB fully adjustable 43 millimeter fork. It's inverted, just like the other machines have their forks in this category. Uh, some people ask what the benefit is of an inverted fork, and from what I understand, the inverted fork, since the stanchion, I believe it's called, has a larger diameter than the actual aluminum piece of the fork itself that comes out of the bottom, 
This results in a larger clamp that goes around the triple tree and ties it to the frame, giving it improved strength under load. And additionally, having that fork inverted puts the heavier, larger piece once more uh, up at the top, which turns it into sprung mass rather than unsprung mass. Uh, and the more sprung mass that you have, the better, because unsprung mass gets translated into your steering input. And if you have more unsprung mass down low, your steering can be slower and heavier. Uh, just from what I understand, I am not a mechanical engineer. I did not major in physics. If someone can word that better than me, Again, please do it in the comments below. I don't know everything. Uh, Suzuki and Honda kind of tying for second place here with a 41 millimeter fork, each from a respectable manufacturer, one being KYB, same as the CF, and then Honda loves to use Showa. It seems to be their preferred in-house brand, and as far as I know, I think Showa is under the roof of Honda. I could also be wrong about that. Rear suspension, none of these welterweights have anything fancy going on in the rear. Uh, I believe all of these are going to be just a standard monoshock with preload adjustability so you can set the sag or the squat of the machine whenever you get into the saddle. Okay, brakes. We have some variability once more. CF Moto uses J Huan, which is a subsidiary of Brembo, so these are quality components with good quality control. The 800NK coming in with two 320mm discs on a four piston caliper which are radially mounted. The GSX-8S coming in right behind that 10 millimeter smaller with two 310 millimeter discs on a four piston caliper using a Nissan setup. And the Honda goes the exact same way, but instead of a 310 millimeter disc, they only have a 296 millimeter disc on their front. But bigger doesn't always mean better. And of course, bigger disc means bigger weight also. So a smaller disc has the exact opposite where you're actually kind of saving weight and you're not bringing as much mass to a stop. But the bigger disc does have better heat management. So there are some trade-offs there. Uh, the rear brakes, this is nothing special. I just threw this in here because I usually do. Uh, CF Moto leads the way again, a 260 millimeter disc in the rear on a single piston caliper powered by J. Huan components. And then Suzuki and Honda have the same 240 millimeter disc with a single piston in this and caliper pinching it to bring it to a stop. Uh, the rear disc on street is not as important as your front disc, but it is still nice to have quality components and materials being used on the rear brake. Uh, you get about 30% of your braking force from what I have gathered uh, from the rear. So uh, don't just ignore the statistic, it is important but maybe not as important as the rest of the story above us that we just talked about and covered. So to recap everything, um, well, let's move over to our category leader here. And you can see it is just a sea of teal from the Chinese powerhouse that is CF Moto. And on that note, um, just real quick, there has been so much chatter about CF Moto becoming a disruptive manufacturer in the industry. And I think that's really what they are. They're breaking a lot of stigmas that have otherwise been set in place by a lot of other Chinese companies before them that were not putting out quality products and components. And in general, they were about half the price, so you got about half the quality. Uh, CF Moto is not exactly half the price. They do save you up to, you know, I think like $2,000 difference on some of their motorcycle offerings uh, as you work up the ladder. Uh, but their whole thing is ride without compromise. And I think that the CF Moto group is doing a lot to kind of wake up the Japanese manufacturers who are experts in what they do, uh, but have maybe gotten a little complacent and comfortable where they're at because no one has really come along to challenge them aside from each other, uh, the big four being Suzuki, Honda, Yamaha, and Kawasaki. So here comes CF Moto, and it's interesting that they are going after different segments of the industry with their motorcycles being targeted at a specific manufacturer, or so it seems at least. Uh, two examples I can think of off the top of my head. The 300NK is kind of targeted at the Honda CB300, and the CF Moto 450SS is obviously and very like statistically on paper and in the real world targeted at the Kawasaki Ninja 400. So I think it's very interesting to see CF Moto kind of moving up the ranks generating more buzz and kind of poking the bear that is the big four Japanese conglomeration of company. As competitive as they are, a lot of us feel they maybe have gotten out of hand recently with some of their pricing tactics and surcharges. But then CF Moto comes along and they're like, here's essentially the same package, 
just our rendition of it, it's going to be a little bit less money, or it might be the same money, but you're going to get more stuff at our price point, and we'll even give you a better warranty. And yeah, maybe we don't have that name to stand on or stand behind just yet, but they are working on that. I don't even sell the CF Moto brand anymore, but their motorcycles still excite me. I still believe in their product, and that's why I'm making this video today. But I'm going to go ahead and cut myself off here, so let's go to the outro. Thank you guys so much for making it till the very end. I hope that you learned a little bit and that you found this video helpful. If that's the case, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future, and also leaving a like on it so that the algorithm knows to show you more content from my page. Again, go to fogeygarage.com, use code OMNI10 for 10% off of your entire order at checkout. Appreciate your continued support as always i hope you have a wonderful day and please ride safe <music>